This video lecture explains disjoint set data structures. Disjoint sets help us keep track of non-overlapping groups of elements. A disjoint set data structure maintains a collection curly S equals then a number of sets, something like S sub 1, S sub 2, up to S sub K. That is, a disjoint set S is actually a collection of several sets. We identify each of these sets by a representative. That means one of the elements of this particular set represents this set. Let's go with an example. Let's say that S1 is equal to some elements like A, B, and C. S2 has the following elements, that is something like B, C, and D. S1 and S2 are not disjoint. In disjoint sets, there should not be anything in common. If we have S1 equals A, B, C, and S2 equals D, E, F, G, then these two sets are disjoint because there is no element in common between S1 and S2. Therefore, all the elements between all the sets in this part of the disjoint set should be unique. We identify each set by a representative. This representative is a member of the set. In some applications, it does not matter which member is used as the representative. All we need to make sure is that if we ask for the representative of a set twice without modifying the set between the requests, we get the same answer both times. Other applications may require a specified rule for choosing the representative. Such a pre-specified rule can be returning the smallest member or returning the largest member with an assumption that the members can be ordered. But many of the times there might not be a way to order these members. It depends on the application. In a disjoint set data structure, we have to maintain three operations. The first operation is called make set, given an element. The second operation is called union of two elements. The third operation is called find set of an element. The first operation make set. Make set actually creates a new set S of i, which contains only one element given as the parameter. Then we add S i to the set S. The representative of S i will be the element for which we have created this particular set. When we call a make set, exactly one element is present in the newly created set, and that element becomes the representative of that particular set. In the union operation, there are two parameters. These two parameters are two elements. If the first parameter x is an element of the set S sub x and the second parameter y is an element of a set S sub y. In that case, we reconstruct S in such a way that S is equal to S minus S sub x minus S sub y. Then actually with whatever set we receive, we do an union of the union of S sub X and S sub Y. This means that if S contains the following sets, then union of 2 and 5 would result in, for 2, we know that this set contains 2, 
so we'll subtract this one and we know that this set contains five we will subtract this one as well so the only item left would be six comma nine so we have six comma nine now we'll have to do the union of the combined part of s sub x and s sub y so if we combine these two items two sets then we receive 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 5 so union of 2 comma 5 will actually generate this now the final operation find set find set x would return the representative of the set that contains x these are all the definitions associated with the disjoint set data structure. We will now see an example. One of the applications of disjoint set data structure is to find out components in a graph that is groups of vertices in a graph. A graph is generally represented by a G which contains two types of elements in it. One is a set of vertices and the other one is a set of edges. Let's say that we have a set of vertices V equals A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Let's say that we have a set of edges and the first edge is a link between A and a B. The second edge is AC. The third edge is um, DE. The fourth edge is A comma D. The fifth edge is AF. And the last is GH. We can draw this graph to visualize how it looks. So we have A and a B. So we have a vertex named A. We have a vertex named B. And in between these two vertices, we have an edge. Now, um, we are saying that we have another edge between A and C. We already have a, so we need to create a C and there is an edge between these um, two vertices. There is an edge between a D and E. So um, let's construct that particular edge between a D and E. Then the next edge is AD. So this is that edge. The next one is AF. Therefore, we create F and we have this one. Then finally, we have another edge, G and H. We haven't yet created those two vertices, G and H. So we create those two vertices, G and H, and then we connect them via an edge. Now we can see that in this graph, we particularly have two components one is here and the other component is this one we will write an algorithm which will help us detect these two components sometimes in a very large graph which might have millions of vertices and millions of ages it is very difficult to keep track of the components and discovering the components is important because analysts can quickly understand which element is connected to which one. For example, node 100 and node 10,000, are they connected? That means are they in the same component? A question with our particular running example can be something like are nodes F and H connected, meaning is that are they in the same component? The answer is no. Um, or the question can be something like um, are nodes B and um, C connected? The answer is yes. So once we construct a disjoint set data structure, we should be able to find these vertices in this component in one set and the vertices in this component in another set. 
let's discuss the algorithm to find connected components. Let us put all the graph descriptions in the side um, so that whenever required we can um, recall how we drew the graphs or what is the data associated with our current running example. Given that we have all these uh, three functionalities or three operations associated with these joint sets, the actual algorithm is not quite difficult, especially not the pseudocode. So let's uh, write the pseudocode. Let's assume that the name of the function is connected components. It has one parameter, which is g that is the given graph for each vertex of a g we write it this way for each vertex that means v is an element of the vertex set we have in g so g dot v actually represents the vertex set in given g for each of these vertices we call the make set function um, that means we create a set for each of the vertices make set and as the parameter we provide the vertex now for each of the edge in our list of edges that means for each pair of vertices u and v that are provided um, with g dot e which is our list of edges we will have to apply union and we do that union between u and v but we apply this union only when we find that the set corresponding to u and the set corresponding to v are two different sets so we have to apply one if statement here that means if we find that the set associated with u is different than the set associated with v then we have to merge those two sets that can be performed using union of u and v which is this function now notice that this part actually creates the initial sets and number of initial sets will be number of vertices we have and in this part based on the edges we will be combining sets together one edge that connects two different sets will actually merge two sets and finally whenever our execution comes here each set will represent a component so let's go back to our running example so we are given this particular graph for which we will execute the algorithm we have just discussed in the very first step of the connected components algorithm which is this one we create sets for each of the vertices and that means in the very beginning in the very initial stage we will have all the vertices in separate sets for each of the edges we will execute the algorithm the first edge we have is a comma b a comma b will merge these two sets what we will have is a comma b so these particular two sets will not survive rather their joint set this one will survive the rest of the sets will remain the same now the next age is a c and the set associated with a is this one the set associated with a c is this one so we will be merging these two sets as a result we will have a combined set which contains a b and c 
the rest of the sets will remain the same. The next edge is DE. So we will merge these two sets. The first set A, B, C will remain the same. Then we will have a combined set which contains DE and the rest of the sets will remain the same. Now the next edge is A, D. So we will be combining these two sets because one set contains A and the other set contains D. After we combine these two sets, we have A, B, C, D and E in one set. The rest of the sets will remain the same. The next edge is A, F. A belongs to this set and F belongs to this set. So we are going to combine these two sets. As a result, the combined set will contain A, B, C, D, E and F. The rest of the sets will remain the same, which are G and H. Finally, we have another edge which is g comma h g comma h are in these two sets so these two sets will be merged the first set a b c d e f will remain the same the next two sets g and h will be combined now notice that in our graph there were two components and in the first component we had a b c d e and f and also here in the first set we have a b c d e f in the second component we had g and h here as well in the second set we have g and h together that indicates that the algorithm is working or detecting the components nicely. Each set of a disjointed data structure can be represented using a linked list where each element node points to the head and tail. Generally, the head pointer points to the representative node. In this example, C is the representative node of a set that contains C, B, and G. We will not go deep inside the linked list based implementation. In the next video, I will explain how we can design another implementation called Disjoint Set Forest as the disjoint set data structure. We will also discuss the details of make set, union, and find set operations. Hope to see you soon in the next video. Thank you.